हेलो रिवान सो दिस इज चैप्टर नंबर सिक्स ऑफ मॉडर्न हिस्ट्री बाय बिपिन चंद्र एंड द चैप्टर नेम इज रिवॉल्ट ऑफ 1857 प्लीज टेक आउट योर बुक्स एंड नोट बुक एंड अपेन अलोंग विद इट एंड लेट स्टार्ट द ऑडियो बुक द रिवॉल्ट ऑफ 1857 अ माइटी पॉपुलर रिवॉल्ट ब्रोक आउट इन द नॉर्दर्न एंड सेंट्रल इंडिया इन एटीन and nearly swept away the british rule it began with the mutiny of the sepoys or the indian soldiers of the company's army but soon engulfed wide regions and invoked and involved the masses millions of peasants artisans and soldiers fought heroic uh, heroically for over a year and by their exemplary courage and sacrifice wrote a glorious chapter in the history of indian people the general causes of the revolt of 1857 were as follows The revolt of 1857 was much more than a mere product of sepoy discontent. It was in reality a product of the character and the policies of colonial colonial rule, of the accumulated grievances of the people against the company's administration and of their dislike for the foreign regime. For over a century as the British had been conquering the country bit by bit, popular discontent and hatred against foreign rule had begun gaining strength among the different sections of the indian society it was this discontent that burst forth into a mighty popular revolt perhaps the most important cause of this popular discontent was the economic exploitation of the country by the british and the complete destruction of the traditional economic fabric both impoverished the vast mass of peasants artisans handicraftsmen as also a large number of traditional zamindars and chiefs we have traced the disastrous economic impact of early british rule in in the chapter other general causes were the british land and land revenue policies and the systems of law and administration in particular a large number of peasant proprietors subjected to exorbitant land revenue demand lost their land to traders and money lenders and found themselves hopelessly involved in debt the new landlords lacking ties of tradition that had linked the old zamindars to peasants pushed up rents to ruinous heights and evicted them in case of non payments the economic decline of peasantry found expression in 12 major and numerous minor famines famines from 1770 to 1857 similarly many zamindars were harassed by demands for higher land revenues and and threatened with forfeiture of their zamindari lands and rights and loss of their their status in the villages they resented their loss even more when they were replaced by rank outsiders officials merchants money lenders in addition common people were hard hit by prevalence of corruption at the lower levels of administration the police petty officials and lower law courts were were notoriously corrupt William Edwards a British official wrote William Edwards a British official wrote in 1859 while discussing the causes of the revolt that the police were a scourge to the people and that their oppressions and extractions form one of the chief grounds of dissatisfaction with our government the petty officials lost no opportunity of enriching themselves at the cost of riots riots and the zamindars the complex judicial system enabled the rich to oppress the poor flogging torture and jailing of the cultivators for errors of rent or land revenue of or interest on debt were quite common thus the growing poverty of the people made them desperate and led them to join general revolt in the hope of improving their lot the middle and the upper classes of indian society particularly in the north were hard hit by their exclusion from the well paid higher posts in the administration the gradual disappearance of indian states deprived those indians who were employed in them in high administrative and judicial posts of means of livelihood british supremacy also led to the ruin of persons who made a living by following cultural pursuits pursuits the indian rulers had been pa- patrons of art patrons of art and literature and had supported scholars religious preachers and divines 
displacement of these rulers by the East India Company meant the sudden withdrawal of this patronage and the improvisement of those who had depended upon it. Religious preachers, pundits, Malvis who felt that their entire future was threatened were to play an important role in spreading hatred against the foreign rule. Another basic cause of the up unpopularity of British rule was its very fo foreignness. The British remained perpetual foreigners in the country. For one, there was no social link or communication between them and the Indians. Unlike the foreign conquerors before them, they did not mix socially even with the upper classes of the Indians. Instead, they had a feeling of racial superiority and treated Indians with contempt and arrogance. As Sayyid Ahmad Khan wrote later, even natives of the highest rank never came into presence of officials but with an inward fear and trembling. Most of all, the British did not come to settle in India or and to make it their home. The main aim was to enrich themselves and then go back to Britain along with their wealth. The people of India were aware of this basically foreign character of the new rulers. They refused to recognize the British as their benefactors and looked with suspicion upon every act of theirs. They had thus a vague sort of anti-British feeling which had found expression even earlier than the revolt in numerous popular uprisings against the British. The period of growth of discontent among the people coincided with certain events which shattered the general belief in the invincibility of British arms and encouraged the people to believe that the days of British regime were numbered. The British army suffered major reverses in the First Afghan War 1838-42, in the Punjab Wars 1845-49 and in the Crimean War 1854 to 1856. The 1855 and 6, the Santhal tribesmen of Bihar and Bengal rose up armed with axes and bows and bows and arrows and revealed the potentialities of a popular uprising by temporarily sweeping away British rule from their area. Though the British ultimately won these wars and suppressed the Santhal uprising, the disasters they suffered in major battles revealed that the British army could be defeated by determined fighting even by an Asian army. In fact, the Indians made here a serious error of political judgment by underestimating British strength. This error was to cause the rebels of 1857 dear. At the same time, the historical significance of this factor should not be missed. People do not revolt simply because they have desire to overthrow their rulers. They must in addition possess a confidence that they can do so successfully. The annexation of Awadh by Lord Dalhousie in 1856 was widely resented in India in general and in Awadh in particular. More specifically, it created an atmosphere of rebellion in Awadh and in company's army. Dalhousie's action angered company sepoys, 75,000 of whom came from Awadh. Lacking an all India feeling, these sepoys had helped the British conquer the rest of India, but they did possess regional and local patriotism and did not like that their homelands should come under the foreigners' sway. Moreover, the annexation of Awadh adversely affected the sepoys' purse. The, they had to pay higher taxes on the land his family held in Awadh. The excuse Dalhousie had advanced for annexing Awadh was that he wanted to free the people from the Nawab's mismanagement and Talukdar's oppression, but in practice, the people got no relief. Indeed, the common man had now pay to pay higher land revenue and additional taxes on articles of food, houses, ferries, opium and justice. The dissolution of the Nawab's administration and army threw out of jobs thousands of nobles, gentlemen, and officials together with their retainers and officers and soldiers and created unemployment in almost every peasant's home. Similarly, merchants, shopkeepers and handicraftsmen who had catered to the Avad court and nobles lost their livelihood. Moreover, the British confiscated the estates of majority of the talukdars or zamindars. These dis dispossessed talukdars numbering nearly 21,000 anxious to regain their lost estates and position became the most dangerous opponents of the British rule.
the annexation of awadh along with the other annexations of dalhousie created panic among rulers of the native states they now discovered that their most groveling royalty loyalty to the british had failed to satisfy the british greed for territory what is of even greater importance the political prestige of the british suffered a great deal because the manner in which they had repeatedly broken their written and oral pledges and treaties with the indian powers and annexed them or reduced them to subordination and imposed their own nominees on their thrones this policy of annexation and subordination was for example directly responsible for making nana saheb the rani of jhansi and bahadur shah their staunch enemies nana saheb was adopted son of bahji rao ii and the last peshwa the british refused to grant nana saheb the pension they were paying to bahji rao ii the last peshwa and forced him to live at khanpur far away from his family seat at pune similarly british ins- insistence on the annexation of jhansi in sense the proud rani lakshmi bai who wanted her adopted son to succeed her deceased husband the house of moguls was humbled when the lord dalhousie announced in 1849 that the successor of successor to bahadur shah would have to abandon the historic red fort and move to a humbler residence at the kutub on the outskirts of delhi and in 1856 canning announced that after bahadur shah's death the moguls would lose their titles of kings and would be known as mere princes an important factor in turning the people against british rule was their fear that it endangered their religion this fear was largely due to the activities of the christian missionaries who were to be seen everywhere in the schools in the hospitals in the prisons and at the market places these missionaries tried to convert people and made violent and vulgar public attacks on hinduism and islam they openly ridiculed and denounced the long cherished outcomes customs and traditions of the people they were moreover provided police protection the actual conversions made by them appeared to the people as living proofs of the threat to their religion popular suspicion that the alien government supported the activities of the missionaries was strengthened by certain acts of the government and the actions of some of its officials in 1850 the government the government enacted a law which enabled which enabled a convert to christianity to inherit his ancestral property moreover the government maintained at its cost chaplains or christian priests in the army many officials civil as well as military considered it their religious duty to encourage missionary propaganda and to provide instruction in christianity in government schools and even in jails the conservative religious and social sentiments of many people were also hurt by some of the humanitarian measures which the government had undertaken on the advice of the indian reformers they believed that the alien christian government had no right to interfere in the religion and customs the abolition of the custom of sati the legalization of widow remarriage and the opening of western education to girls appeared to them examples of such undue interference religious sentiments were also hurt by the official policy of taxing lands belonging to temples and mosques and to their priests or the charitable institutions which had been exempted from taxation by previous indian rulers moreover the many brahmin and muslim families dependent on these lands were aroused to fury and they began to propagate that the british were trying to undermine the religion the religions of india the revolt of 1857 started with the mutiny of the company sepoys we have therefore to examine why the sepoys who had their devoted service enabled to the company to conquer india and who enjoyed high prestige and economic security suddenly became rebellious here the first fact to be kept in view is that the sepoys were after all a part of indian society and therefore felt and suffered to some extent that other indians did the hopes desires and the despairs of the other section of the society especially especially the peasantry were reflected in them the sepoy was in fact peasant in uniform if their near and dear ones suffered from the destructive economic consequences of british rule they in turn felt this suffering 
they were also duly affected by the general belief that the british were interfering in their religions and were determined to convert indians to christianity their own experience predisposed them to such belief they knew that the army was maintaining chaplains and the state cost moreover some of the british officers in their religions in their in their religious order carried on christian propaganda among the sepoys the sepoys also had religious or caste grievances of their own the indians of those days were very strict in observing caste rules etc the military authorities forbade the sepoys to wear caste and secretarian marks beards or turbans in 1856 an act was passed under which every new recruit undertook to serve even overseas if required this hurt the sepoy sentiments as according to the current religion beliefs of the hindus travel across the sea was forbidden and led to loss of caste the sepoy also had numerous other grievances a wide gulf had come into existence between the officers and the sepoys who were often treated with contempt by the british officers a contemporary english observer noted that the officers and men have not been friends but strangers to one another the sepoy is esteemed an inferior creature he is shown at he is treated roughly he is spoken of as a nigger he is addressed as a sewer or pig the younger men treat him as an inferior animal even though a sepoy was a good a soldier as the british counterpart he was paid much less and lodged and fed in a far worse manner than the latter moreover he had little respect to rise no indian could rise higher than the subedar drawing 60 to 70 rupees a month in fact the sepoy's life was quite hard naturally the sepoy resented this artificial and enforced position of inferiority as the british historian t r holmes has put it though he might give signs of military genius of a hider he knew that he could never attain the pay of a english subaltern and the rank to which he might attain after some 30 years of faithful service would not be protect would not protect him from the insolent dictation of an ensign fresh from england a more immediate cause of the sepoy's dissatisfaction uh, dissatisfaction was at the recent order that they would not be given the foreign service allowance batta when serving in sindh or in punjab this order resulted in big cut in the salaries of large number of them the annexation of avadh the home of many sepoys further inflamed their feelings the dissatisfaction of the sepoys in fact had a long history a sepoy mutiny had broken out in bengal as early as 1764 the authorities had suppressed it by blowing away 30 sepoys from the mouths of guns in 1806 the sepoys at vellore mut- mutinied but were crushed with terrible violence with several hundred men dying in battle In 1824 the 47th regiment of sepoys at Barakpur refused to go to Burma by sea route the regiment was disbanded and unarmed men were fired upon by artillery and the leaders of the sepoys were hanged in 1844 seven battalions revolted seven battalions revolted on the question of salaries and batta similarly the sepoys of Afghanistan in Afghanistan were on the verge of revolt during the Afghan war two subedars a muslim and a hindu were shot dead for giving expression to the discontent in the army dissatisfaction was so widespread among the sepoys that frederick frederick halliday lieutenant governor of bengal in 1853 was led to remark that the bengal army was more or less mutinous always on the verge of revolt and certain to have mutinied at one time or another as soon as the provocation might combine with opportunity thus 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 widespread intense and intense dislike and even hatred of the foreign rule prevailed among large number of indian people soldiers of the company's army this feeling was later summed by sayed ahmed khan in his causes of indian mutiny as follows at length the indians fell into the habit of thinking that all laws were passed in view to degrade and ruin them and to deprive them and their compatriots of the religion 
एट लास्ट केम द टाइम वेन ऑल मेन लुकड अपॉन द इंग्लिश गवर्नमेंट एज स्लो पॉइजन अ रोप ऑफ सैंड अ ट्रेचरस फ्लेम ऑफ फायर दे बिगेन टू बिलीव दैट इफ टूडे दे हेस्केप फ्रॉम द क्लचेज ऑफ द गवर्नमेंट टमोरो दे वुड फॉल इन टू दैम और दैट इवन इफ दे एस्केप्ड द मोरो द थर्ड डे वुड सी देयर विन द गवर्नमेंट वेस्ट फॉर अ चेंज इन द गवर्नमेंट एंड रिजॉइस हर्टली एट द आइडिया ऑफ ब्रिटिश रूल बींग सुपरसीडेड बाय एन अदर सिमिलरली अ प्रोक्लमेशन इशूड बाय द द रेबल्स इन डेली कंप्लेन फर्स्टली द हिंदुस्तान दे हैव एग्जैक्टेड एज रेवेन्यू रुपीज थ्री हंड्रेड वेयर ओनली टू हंड्रेड वर ड्यू द रुपीज फाइव हंड्रेड वेयर बट फोर हंड्रेड वर डिमांडेबल एंड स्टिल दे आर सोलिटियस टू रेज देयर डिमांड्स द पीपल मस्ट देयर फोर बी रूइंड एंड बेगर्ड सेकेंडली दे हैव डबल्ड एंड क्वाड्रुपल्ड एंड रेज द टेन फोल्ड द चौकीदारी टैक्स एंड हैव विश टू रूइन द पीपल Thirdly, the occupation of all respectable and learned men is gone, and millions are dis- destitute of the necessaries of their life. When any one in search of employment determines on proceeding, proceeding from one zilla to another, every soul is charged six pi as toll on roads, and has to pay from four to eight annas for each cart. Those who wo- those who pay are permitted to travel on the public roads. How far can we detail the operation of the tyrants? Gradually, matters arrived at such a pitch that the government had determined to subvert everyone's religion. The revolt of eighteen fifty seven came as a culmination of popular discontent with British policies and imperialist exploitation, but it was no sudden occurrence. For nearly a century, there had been a fierce popular resistance to British domination all over India. Armed rebellions began as British, as British rule was established in Bengal and Bihar, and they occurred in area after area. It was as it was conquered. There was hardly a year without armed opposition or a decade without major rebellion in one part of the country or other. From seventeen sixty three to eighteen fifty six, there were more than forty major rebellions and hundreds of minor ones. These rebellions had been often led by rajas, nawabs, zamindars, landlords, and polygars, but the fighting forces had been provided by peasants, artisans, and ex-soldiers of the deposed Indian rulers, and dispossessed the and dispossessed and disarmed zamindars and polygars. These almost continuous rebellions were massive in their totality, but were wholly local in their spread and isolated from each other. they were also localized in their effects thank you for this section we would now move on to the immediate causes of the revolt of 1857 in the next part please tune in for the next part and thank you for listening all the best everyone